What's up guys? Today we are looking at the Badr Hari KO from this past weekend. I want to take you guys through what technique KO'd him and how to throw it yourself. And then I want to go through what Badr did wrong when he'd already knocked his opponent down three times. How did he lose the fight after being so dominant? for the first round and a little bit. We're gonna go through all that in today's episode, but intro first, guys. All right, guys, before we get into the head round kick that KO'd Botter, talk about the technique, talk about how I've tried to utilize this in my own fights, I want to go in and look at the strategy that Botter utilized, which ended up costing him the fight, ended up resulting in him getting KO'd, and how I don't like utilizing this fight strategy. Basically, how can you guys keep yourself safer and not get too wound up? Let's talk about that first. Botter comes out, he goes cross body shot, he puts the guy down. He comes back in a little bit later in the round and does some other techniques and puts him down with a body shot again. You already have two knockdowns. You're going, oh, one more, and the fight's done. But then the bell rings, and all of a sudden you're going, okay, I come up for the next round, I have to be a little bit more cautious, but he comes back out, he gets another knockdown. And most people were probably going, wow, Botter's on fire, there's just nothing that could have put him away. But I wanna take a look at a couple little clips here as well, when you see Botter kind of stumble and his head falls forward, and he's getting a little bit too frantic for my liking. I know you're close to getting the KO. It only takes one more punch potentially to have the fight done with, but you still have to be defensive. And that's what we're talking about right now. Remembering that even when this guy is hurt, this guy is like one little touch away from going down, that defense is still the priority. Never neglect defense. As soon as you do, what happens? Well, you get knocked out like Botter got knocked out because he just thought the fight was done. He thought he was a shoe in to win and then all of a sudden, boom, and you're down and you're like, well, darn it. Now, this is one of the reasons that I have not been KO'd is once I hurt somebody, once I clip them and I go, oh, this guy's in danger of going down and I can finish the fight, I still come forward and make sure that this hand's tight to my head. This hand's tight to my head. I still make sure I'm ready for this guy to throw back. Because it's like Duke Rufus said when he was commentating one of my fights back in 2013, I believe, a wounded animal is a dangerous animal. So as soon as you hit somebody and they go down, right away they're thinking, shoot, I'm in big trouble. I need to throw back. I need to become dangerous. I need to try and fight my way out of this predicament I'm in. And I think Botter forgot that. Botter was, you know, body shot, hurt him. Other side, body shot, hurt him. Put him down a third time and just went, you know what, this guy's done. But his opponent wasn't done. His opponent had something left. And if you can remember that, when you're in your fight, when you're on the hunt, you're like, I'm gonna KO this guy, I'm gonna put him away. But defense is still my priority. If you remember that, you don't get KO'd the way Botter did this weekend. Now, let's talk about the head round kick that finished this fight. And very often, when we see people throw head kicks, it's off the back leg. But when somebody throws a head kick off the lead leg, what you will usually see is either a skip up to the head round kick, that's probably the most common, the skip to the head round kick. The trouble with that one is it's so slow, or not so slow, but slow enough that by the time the guy moves in for the attack and you skip, he's already on you. So that's more, in my opinion, of an offensive kick. You're moving forward, you're bringing the attack to them. Now there's other things we can do as well, which involve like coming up and shuffle stepping, but again, that's you moving to them. Not what happened to Botter. What happened to Botter was the guy had his back against the ring ropes, he had his feet planted, he very simply shifted his weight back, he probably did a tiny little pivot as he shifts his weight back just so he opens up his hips, and then from there all he has to do is snap. I have tried to utilize this technique in one of my fights in particular. It was against Robin Van Roosmolen, it was a strategy my brother came up with because he went, anytime you're here, you're gonna be able to lean back and kick him very easy. The trouble and the reason it didn't work against Robin is Robin keeps his hands up here all the time and we could not find that opening. There was no chink in his armor for round kicks up to head level. He's just so good at protecting himself. But with Botter, very often his hands come down to here and that's when this kick worked perfectly. So if you are fighting somebody who doesn't keep their hands pasted against their temples constantly, it's a simple shift back, a little pivot, as you shift your weight, and then from there, all you have to do 
is tap that foot in. This is actually sort of karate style. Instead of aiming through, I just practice fade back, lift, and I just aim through the target. If the target's here, I just aim through maybe three or four inches. It's just a snappy technique. One that I feel is underutilized, especially if you are a long-legged athlete. So how do we set this up? Assuming both guys are not just completely stationary and you can just lean back and go like that. Well, the best way in my opinion is to set up some long punches, put you right at the perfect range to let that kick go. I go from here, I lean back. Most people will go, okay, he's leaned back, he's out of range, but no, it puts me right at that position where I can blast that head kick in. And in the instance of the butter fight, the ring ropes were right behind his opponent, so all the guy had to do was just lean back and the ring ropes caught him, which is even more perfect because as you lean backwards further and further, you can push your hips further forward and create some extra distance. Now we already talked about what Botter could have done, just you know, stayed a little bit more defensive, more defensive, meant his hand would have been up higher, his hand would have just been, instead of here, here, this kick would not have worked. This kick only works when you see somebody being lazy with their hands or if they reach improperly. They see the kick coming, they go, oh, body shot, and they come down on a 45 degree angle instead of across. To check it but it is something that you should definitely be working you can just be tapping away you know working on the bag and just lean back working away lean back so before i wrap up this episode let's talk about botter where he goes from here because obviously still a massive kickboxing superstar but i believe now that's three losses against some top guys in glory we got rico we got Benny, I can't remember his name, somebody who's challenged Rico for the belt, I think three times. Potter lost to him as well, and now this most recent loss. Where do you go from there if you are one of the most prominent stars in the kickboxing world, but you are not winning the fights? Well, I think for the moment, Getting Butter back in against somebody like Alistair Overeem would be the best way for him to move forward. Alistair Overeem is now with Glory. He's going to be fighting Rico Verhoeven for the Glory title, but I don't think he has much of a chance of winning that fight. So once that fight is concluded, Butter versus Overeem, number three, is an amazing, amazing fight to make. One with a lot of history because it would be a rubber match. And just both guys are not at the best point of their career, coming off a lot of losses. So I think that's the fight to make because it's going to get so much attention. Fans around the world are going to watch it and it puts both guys, whoever wins, in the position to restart his career. But if I can give you anything, guys, to walk away from this episode, yes, the high kick is awesome, but it's defense. Remember to main maintain defense every second, half second, millisecond of the fight. As soon as you start going, oh, I'm gonna put this guy away and your hands start dropping, that's when the possibility for you to get KO'd happens. And it's one of the reasons, as I already mentioned, that I have not taken any big KO shots in my fight career because I've prioritized defense so often. Now, the compromise there is that I don't score a whole lot of KOs because when I hurt somebody and I go, okay, they're hurt, I always look, oh shoot, are they ready to come back? Are they gonna try and hit me? Are they gonna do a big panic shot? I'm always thinking defensively, but it's maintained the safety of my brain. And obviously I was still able to win all the biggest kickboxing belts in the world, it didn't stop me from doing that. It just stopped me from getting concussed to the head over and over because I make mistakes trying to be too aggressive in neglecting defense. That's what I hope you guys take away from this episode. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. If you haven't already, guys, join the channel and get subscribed. Train hard. I'll see you back here soon for another video.